I come from Chorley, a place of renown, for very little, it's a sleepy old town. It has a street market and a couple of gas tanks, quite a few pubs and one or two banks. Now I've searched everywhere, both here and around, in back streets and Parkland, even underground. It's named from a river that no one has found. Where's the river in old Chorley town? It's quite a conundrum when you're in Astley Park. There's fields and there's trees, but of water no mark. I've gone up the hills and I've come down the valleys, marched up the high roads and crept down the alleys. I stopped and asked questions till I have to be muzzled. But even when silent, I'm still really puzzled. I've sat there in silence with my throat really sore from asking in Chorley, where is the river Chore? The tell of the town's name comes from where it stands, in meadows by a stream, with its own river strands. Now I've wandered and searched, and I've given my best to find the answer to my humble quest. Even in Shekseveva, our Hungarian twin town, to repeating myself, it's just getting me down. So will someone please tell me I'm getting a bore? Where the flipping ecking Chorley is the flipping river Chore? The place had some factories, but they've all closed down, replaced by brick boxes of a dormitory town. If you want somewhere to burn, loot and pillage, you couldn't do much better than that damn buckshaw village. And in the far past there were pits underground, but never will you hear a brook's babbling sound. Can someone please tell me, as the point's pressing sorely, where there's a river flowing through the township of Chorley? Now I'm getting weary, and I want some peace, but it seems that my query, it never will cease. I think of the Amazon, the Thames and the Nile, but mention the chore, and I just wryly smile. I've searched and I've searched till my time's nearly done, but if I go to heaven, I'll ask the Great One, as I'm going through St Peter's great door, where in God's name, in Chorley, is God's river chore? The verse used in the introduction to this video is by a truly born writer, Nicky J. Poole, and it sums up the characteristic of Chorley's diminutive river, the River Chore. Many walk over it and alongside it without ever realising its presence, and yet it is to this ever-flowing stream that Chorley owes its very existence. But where to start on our quest to discover the chore? As a starting point, let's look in Benjamin Pitts Capper's A Topographical Dictionary of England, published in 1808. Under the heading of CHR, we find a description of Chorley. The relevant section for our interest is highlighted here and reads. It is situated near the spring head of the River Chore, which issuing from several springs and running through the town, falls into the Yarrow after giving motion to numerous mills on its banks. A second reference comes from Edward Baines's History Directory and Gazetteer of the County Palatine of Lancashire, Volume 1, published in 1824. In it we read this. The town is pleasantly situated on the summit of a steep hill, the base of which is washed by the Chore, a rivulet which forms its confluence with the Yarrow about a mile below the town. Backtracking the Chore upstream has brought me to the busy Blackburn Road as it passes through Great Norley overlooking Gale Moss. Just a few metres over this stile, a spring gives birth to the chore and sets it on its discreet but determined journey to the River Yarrow. As the young river chore makes its way across the moss, it is already obscured from view. The blue line indicates its flow path. It now flows to its first subterranean passage as it heads towards the Leeds Liverpool Canal.
we now approach the exact spot that the Chowet disappears under the canal. The canal was cut in the first half of the 1790s. The red line indicates the path taken by the Chowet as it passes under the canal. After travelling under the canal and the road leading to the Botany Bay Mill, the river emerges into the open air, once again being difficult to see by the casual or distracted passerby. But no sooner has the Chowet escaped its subterranean journey when once again it is plunged into the darkness as it passes under the M61 motorway which was constructed in 1969. After passing under the motorway, the Chore emerges in this overgrown wooded area at the northern edge of Chorley North Industrial Estate, thus completing the first section of our journey. The Chore now passes through its third covert, which is under Drumhead Road. It emerges on the opposite side in a surprising and tranquil walk then flows slowly past Artwood Residential Estate. Just before Springs Road, the chore curves to cross the Manchester to Preston railway line, constructed in 1843. One can only stand in amazement at the work involved in its construction. Obviously, the aqueduct means constructed first, then the cut dug out for the line. The chore has been known to flood over the aqueduct and onto the line due to weed and sediment building. The most recent recorded episodes being in 1987 and 1999. After crossing the aqueduct, the stream burst north, flowing between Preston Road and the railway line, completely hidden from view by dense shrubbery. At this point we have reached North Street, a busy commercial centre in Chorley. How many of us, as we go about our business here, realise the chore flows past at our feet? The chore surreptitiously flows the length of North Street, heading towards its fourth and longest culvert, under the aptly named Water Street. This is a map showing the path of the Water Street culvert from North Street to Ashley Park. The culvert was renewed in the mid-1970s using concrete pipes. This map, dated 1769, shows the western end of Water Street and the chores flow along it. At this date, Park Road had not yet been constructed and the old road to Pe Preston passed down Church Brow and crossed the chore by means of a ford. This is the same map of 1769 seen earlier, superimposed over a modern map. Note the grassed slope raising to the road above Water Street. This is the embankment constructed by the Wigan and Preston Turnpike Trust and resulted in the coveting of the chore. The new park road enabled a safer and more efficient passage for the growing trade brought about by the Industrial Revolution.
After passing under Park Road, the covert opens on the longest exposed section of the River Chore, since its passage to the Leeds and Liverpool Canal. It now passes through Ashley Park, but even here it goes unnoticed by most of the public. As the covert opens into the park, it is the original stone structure that is seen. The River Chore now heads through Astley Park, soon meeting its fifth culvert under the path that travels through the length of the park. Historians tell of water mills on the Chore since the 1600s, and at least two are mentioned as being on the Astley Estate. The placement of these mills is open to argument, and probably can only be answered by archaeology. I feel this weir would be a good place to start looking. As we progress along the route of the River Chore through Ashley Park Estate, I would like to discuss the naming of this stream. The river itself is the reason for Chorley's very existence. Archaeology has shown the area in which it flows around St Lawrence's Church is the oldest part of Chorley. Indeed, all very old towns, cities and settlements had to be near a reliable, clean supply of water. Several histories in the distant past assume Chorley was named after this river. But more modern thinking believes the river was back named from Chorley. It is said that up until 1673 the stream was known as Main Brook, Main being spelt M-E-S-N-E-S, -E -E meaning a boundary. For more information on the name of Chorley itself there are several suggestions in more recent histories in the local library. For an example, George Bertil's the Field of Churls. We have now reached the point at which the Chore passes from Ashley Park by Culvert under Southport Road into Big Wood.
the Chur now enters its seventh culvert as it passes under Stansted Road. After passing through Big Wood, the Chur feeds into the Gillibrand Reservoir. A reminder that these large country estates with their manor houses were not there because of the beauty and tranquillity of the surrounds, but were places of industry. The Chur leaves the reservoir by an overflow and passes under a bridge carrying the Yarrow Valley Way bypass. As its pace quickens, it flows through the Yellow Valley Country Park. After travelling approximately three and one quarter miles, travelling through seven culverts, across one aqueduct and under numerous bridges, it reaches its journey's end as it joins the River Yarrow.